In a twist that sounds like fiction, World War II's closing days saw German and American soldiers unite for a battle like no other. Castle Itter in Austria was not your typical fairy tale castle. Built in the Austrian Alps, this fortress acted as a prison for mainly French VIPs during World War II. It was a cozy little spot for high-profile prisoners such as former Prime Ministers Paul Renault, Edouard Daladier, and a celebrity appearance by Charles de Gaulle's sister, Marie-Agnès Caillot. In 1945, the war was coming to its close in Europe, and things at Castle Itter were getting spicy. Initially, the SS were running the show, but as they abandoned the castle around the 2nd of May. In one of the most fortunate management changes in history, the Wehrmacht stepped in on the 4th. The guards and the guarded had to face a new reality, however. With the war ending, who's friend and who's foe? The lines got blurrier than a Monet painting. This, of course, sets the stage for the coming events, but does not quite cover their truly bizarre nature. It's like one of those awkward dinner parties, but with the fate of some of France's VIPs hanging in the balance and the SS potentially crashing the party. Stay tuned, because this is just the beginning of the castle's odd role in the final act of the war. The Battle of Castle Itter was not just about where and when, but who. Let's start with Major Josef Sepp Gangel. He was a Wehrmacht officer who decided the Nazi regime wasn't his cup of tea. Instead, he defected, with he and his men joining the Austrian resistance. In a cinema-worthy twist, when he was ordered to execute the prisoners at Castle Itter, he declined, instead siding with the Americans to protect them. This conveniently brings us to our next major figure. Lieutenant John C. Jack Lee Jr. was a straight-out-of-Hollywood American tank commander. His role? turning up at Castle Itter and becoming the unexpected linchpin in its defense. The Sherman tank and 16 men he had brought along with him had proven instrumental in defending the castle, being a large proportion of the firepower of the defenders. The last leader of the defense was Kurt Siegfried Schrader, an SS officer, not your typical villain. Recovering from injuries at the castle, he befriended the French prisoners. Yes, an SS officer and French VIPs became sort of friends, if that doesn't speak volumes about the war's chaotic end. As for the other notables, we will first cover Jean Boratra, the tennis ace turned war hero. One of the prisoners who would play an especially crucial role in the coming battle. Boratra leapt into action, vaulting over the castle walls to fetch help. For comparison, imagine a more extreme Roger Federer who fought a battle. Other French prisoners included former Prime Ministers Edouard Daladier and Paul Reynaud, and Charles de Gaulle's elder sister Marie-Agnès Caillot, among others. Leading up to the Battle of Castle Itter, the war was in its final throes, creating a backdrop of chaos and rapidly shifting allegiances. As the war neared its end, the SS guards, sensing defeat, abandoned their posts, leaving the castle and its high-profile inmates unguarded. Seizing the opportunity, the prisoners took control of the castle. With the SS likely to return, the prisoners needed allies. In a twist of fate, Major Josef Sepp Gangel, a Wehrmacht officer who had become part of the Austrian resistance, emerged as an unlikely savior, having been stationed in the vicinity of Virgil. Rejecting his previous allegiances, Gangel sought to protect the prisoners from the SS. At the same time, an American force under Captain John C. Jack Lee Jr. of the 23rd Tank Battalion, 12th US Armored Division, was also operating nearby. Gangle, aware of Lee's presence, made a decisive move to ally with the Americans. This alliance was unprecedented in the war. Gangle's decision to collaborate with Lee marked a significant moment of defiance against the SS and the Nazi regime he once served. On the morning of May 5, 1945, two days before Germany's surrender, Castle Itter would see its final battle, so far at least. SS troops, Part of the fanatical 17th SS Panzergrenadier Division advanced towards the castle, intent on executing the French VIP prisoners held there. The defenders, a motley crew comprising Wehrmacht soldiers led by Major Joseph Sepp Gangle, American forces under Lieutenant John C. Jack Lee Jr. and the French prisoners themselves, braced for the assault. Their defense was anchored by the Sherman tank named Besotten Jenny, positioned to cover the main entrance. This tank provided a 
crucial line of defense, its 50 caliber machine gun raking the approaching SS troops with relentless fire. However, the tank's reign as a defensive powerhouse was cut short. An 88 mm flak gun, a formidable multi-purpose weapon in the German arsenal, targeted and destroyed the Sherman tank. The radio man inside, working to fix a malfunctioning radio, miraculously survived the attack unscathed, a stroke of luck in the otherwise brutal confrontation. The battle intensified as the SS troops, numbering approximately 150-200, launched a full-scale attack. They were met with fierce resistance from the defenders, fought with a unified resolve, knowing what would come if they were to be overwhelmed. The castle's walls echoed with gunfire as the defenders, including the French VIPs, actively participated in their own defense, firing rifles and throwing grenades. Major Gangle, a key figure in the battle, demonstrated exceptional bravery. In a tragic turn, he was fatally shot by a sniper while attempting to move former French Prime Minister Paul Reynaud to a safer location. Gangle's death underscored the grim reality of the conflict and the high stakes involved in defending the castle. Miraculously, none of the other defenders died during the battle, though four were wounded. In a daring and pivotal move, Jean Borotra, the renowned French tennis player, volunteered to leap over the castle walls and run through enemy lines to contact the approaching American relief force. Borotra's successful communication with the 102nd Infantry Regiment proved crucial. His message informed them of the castle's precarious situation and the need for immediate support. The 142nd, alerted to the urgency, mounted a swift response. They arrived in the nick of time, around 4 p.m., and launched a counterattack against the SS forces, effectively breaking their siege. Their timing was fortunate, as the defenses of the castle would have soon been breached. This intervention was instrumental in turning the tide of the battle, leading to the capture of about 100 SS soldiers and the successful defense of the castle. Abtu's strangest battle was remarkable for several reasons. First, the defenders were comprised of an extremely varied group of nationalities and organizational origins, all able to cooperate to defend themselves. Their unity in defense was a significant deviation from the norm, seeing former enemies willingly fighting side by side. Major Yosef Sepp Gangle's death during the battle underscores the stakes of this fight. Being killed while trying to save the former French Prime Minister, he made a poignant sacrifice from a Wehrmacht officer who chose to defy the SS and align with the Allies. This is especially significant, given the role that Reynaud and some of the other prisoners would play in shaping future French policy after the war's end. Gangle's actions, which in all fairness reached far beyond his wartime actions, led to his commemoration as a national hero in Austria. A street in Virgil is named after him. He is remembered for his courage and for making a stand against the atrocities committed by the Nazi regime. The battle's conclusion saw the timely arrival of the 142nd Infantry Regiment, which played a crucial role in the defeat of the attacking SS troops. The aftermath saw 100 captured SS attackers and an unknown number killed or wounded. This intervention was crucial in tipping the balance in favor of the defenders and preventing the castle from falling. Historically, the Battle of Castle Itter is significant as it represents the only known instance during World War II where German and American forces collaborated against a common enemy. Interestingly, the album The Last Stand by the Swedish heavy metal band Sabaton covers these events in the song The Last Battle. The Battle of Castle Itter stands as a symbol of the complex and often chaotic nature of war, where allegiances can shift in response to greater threats. 